Well, welcome back to Desk Bound Aviator. This is Steve, your host, and today we're located up here in Minnesota, Duluth to be exact, KDLH. And we're taking a look today at the new Flight Factor Boeing 767. It's the version that has the advanced avionics package, which I have installed. Whoops, let's not get in that way. <laughs> um, and it's got some interesting features to it, so I thought it'd be worthwhile taking a flight in this thing. Um, so let's get started. The first thing to do that, we'll hop inside into our brown cockpit and call up down here on the side. You can see here I've got a key that'll pop that. This is the uh, iPad and the flight factor control panel in which you can set up all kinds of parameters and preferences for this aircraft. So the first thing we need to do is to open the passenger door and maybe some cargo doors, let the uh, cargo get loaded. And then we can switch back over to ground mode and we can load a configuration, which is predetermined. Uh, let's see, we've got Go ahead and add a loader unit to that, and we can save that. And then we want to add a slew of passengers, so we'll load custom. And interestingly, it didn't save my previous settings, so uh, I'm going to make that 190, uh, let's say 190 passengers, 20,000, 14,200 fuel. So we'll save that. First, I'm going to optimize it and then save custom. And it says it's been being saved, but I'll believe it when I see it. So now let's load uh, that package. That takes a little while. Usually you hear passengers and bags and so forth trundling onto the aircraft. I don't know if you, you can hear that because I've got the sound turned down quite a bit to allow me to make this video. And one other thing I'm going to do here in the sound part of this iPad panel as soon as we get done loading, um, I'm going to uh, go to options and advanced sound and I'm going to turn down, or I actually already did, the PA volume. That's the uh, public address system. And then I'm going to go over here to in-flight, to PA, and I'm going to tap on safety demonstration. Now that's the, uh, the chief flight attendant making his long spiel to the passengers about fastening safety belts and all of that other stuff. If you don't play that, you wind up doing your whole flight and getting a gong sound. Um, so hopefully we can avoid getting the gong sound reminding us to have that safety spiel right off. So now that we've done all of that, let's go up to the upper panel and turn on some systems, starting with the battery. And then we can see the evidence of that. We'll flip on standby power. We've got ground power coming to the aircraft, so we can tap on that. And we'll turn on some bus ties, utility bus, and the left and right gen cont, con continuity, I guess. And that's all we need to do there. And then I come up here and I turn on the, uh, the IRS system. Rotate these three dials to the nav position. And then I come up here. Let me just zoom in on this a little bit. Up to the, uh, this larger dial, and I rotate that over to the heading position. And that gives us a number indicating how many minutes it will take before the IRS will align itself. Last thing, we can come down here and maybe turn on... Uh, Overhead light, position light, we can let, let that go on, logo light. And I'm going to go ahead and turn on the air so that we can get the air conditioning running for our passengers. Those three, turn on the recirc 
switches. And this guy here, rotate that up to auto. And I'll flip on the uh, engine bleeds and these two isolation valves and the center isolation valve. And then I'm going to rotate these switches to the auto position. And that cranks up our air conditioning. Now that we've got, the, the, you see these three blinking lights here, that's indicating that our IRS is aligned. So we can go down below now and we can actually, uh, let's do this. Let's come down here to our center panel. Now, these dials aren't up on the upper glare shield the way they are on a 737. They're down here on this, uh, the center console. So I'm going to rotate this switch over to the plan view. Then I can come back up here and I have a key set up to pop this FMC, which is the F key. And we can just drag that over here in the middle so it's easily visible. All right, so we tap on FMC and then position in it. If I click on the center of this panel here, that will cause the K to stay lit and therefore I've got keyboard entry into the unit. A reference airport today is Duluth, KDLH. Whoops, let's clear out that message. Try it again. Um, gate one. Actually, I'm, I don't think it is gate one, but I'll leave the gate empty. Uh, and you want to select this number two GPS coordinate and paste it into the set position populates the PFD. And now we go to the root. We can, got it on the scratch pad already. We can just paste it in there. Uh, destination is going to be Chicago. K or E. Flight number. Let's check over here. United 2182 is the flight we're doing today. So UAL. 182. Going that slot. Runways, takeoff runway is going to be 27. And we'll activate it. And now we can go to performance initialization. You can you can do it either way. You can either set up the, the flight first or you can go to performance first. Uh, I'll Tell you what, I tried it last time and I got a, an altitude error, so let's do this. Let's go to departure and arrival. We'll pick departure and we've got runway 27 selected, so let's come back to um, we'll go to route and go to the second page of route, and from here I'm going to come back over to Simbrief. And we can see right here in Simbrief, our, we've got a direct to DLH. So we'll put that in here on the right-hand side. That will say direct to that. And then we've got an airway, B1, B217 to GRB, Green Bay. B217 goes on the left. GRB goes on the right. And we've got another airway, V7 to uh, Great Falls, I think that is, uh, FAH, V7. I don't know what that chime is. V7 to FAH is on the right. And let's see, from there we're going into our star pattern. So I'm going to leave that, I'm going to execute it. And I'll go to Arrivals, and to do that, you notice I hit Departure and Arrivals, and I get the Departure page. It's a, a quirk of this particular model of the uh, 767, that in order to get to the Departures page, you have to hit, go from the Arrivals page and hit Index. That brings you back here, and now you can go to Arrivals, and our arrival in Chicago is going to be runway 27 left. So we go down the list here to ILS 27 left. I'm not going to go all the way out to Vogler, but uh, 
we want to next pick our star, which is Matty 4, and our transition is Fa. So we'll execute that. And now we can take a look at the plagues. Okay, I see what's going on. We've got a discontinuity here, so we'll just select that and we'll replace that. Got a bunch of things going on in this route. So there we go. We start off with FAH, and then we go through a series of waypoints. And we get here to Himgo, Vectors, and Evans. Now here's what I want to do. If we come back over here to Sky Vector, we're going to be coming in here. We've got Kirk, and then Vulcan, and then Himgo. And I'm going to go from Himgo down to Grabl, G-R-A-B-L. So what I'm going to do is type in G-R-A-B-L, and I'm going to put it right in there. And I'm going to pick the top one. Now I'll go down to Evans, select that, and first replace the discontinuity, and then we'll execute that. So now let's go back and go through our whole route, starting off with Fa. We'll step through Cole, Gurn, and on and so forth. There we go. What we're doing here is coming down on the star pattern. We're going to take that left turn at Kirk, right there, and then we're going to come out to Vulcan, to Himgo, Ah, and we've got a vectors, so we'll take gravel and replace the vectors with gravel. And now we execute that, and so that makes the connection for us. So we're good. Now we'll come back up to init ref, and we've got a uh, gross weight. We just tap that left, left number one key, and it fills in the gross weight automatically gives us our 14.2 kilogram, thousand kilograms of fuel. Reserves is going to be two, 2,000 kilograms. Cruise altitude, I believe the uh, flight, flight aware had it as 31,000. Yes, they did. So let's try that. And cost index of 30. And we go to takeoff, flaps five, center thrust minus five degrees here in Chile Duluth. So minus five, we go in there. And if we tap CG, we get 20 and a trim of four. We'll come back and check that a little later. Now I'm gonna tap on select. And when you tap on the on, it goes on. If you tap the off, it goes off. So that's how that works. And if we click these three, watch what happens when I reach the V2 speed. It posts it right up here in the speed bug automatically. Nice feature. Now what I'm gonna do is come down below here on our center console. We can make the, uh, oops have to tap the center and then come outside. Then I can use my key and make that go away. All right, so we'll scroll down here to the bottom of the uh, center console. And what we're looking at here is the frequency, the ILS frequency selector panel. And in order to get that right, we need to come back over here to Sky Vector, take a look at our approach plate for runway uh, 27 left ILS tells us that the frequency for that runway is 110.5. They don't put the zero there, but there is one. So 110.50 at an approach course of 273. And the way we do that, we first have to get this larger wheel and then use your cursor and go up, and that activates it. So 110.50. at 273 degrees.
and that's how you set your ILS approach in this aircraft. Now we can come up here. Uh, let's just go back here and we'll flip our switch back to map mode. And let's see. We can, uh, one thing we can do here that's a little new in this aircraft, and uh, I'll show it to you, and I'm not even sure if it's absolutely necessary, but there is a button down here which is called speed reference. You can see it at the top of this panel. And with speed reference, what you do is you rotate that and you will see your takeoff speeds indicated here on the PFD. So if we start with the first one and just rotate that, what we're looking for, pop this guy and bring that right up here. The first speed is our, our V1 speed, and that's 138. So I'm going to rotate this dial. Oh, there we go. We want to rotate the smaller wheel to 138. And you can see the number change way up there in the left corner. Zoom out just a little bit. Okay. So 138, that's gone in there. And when you reach that and you getting it so you can see it. When you reach 138, then you tap the center of that button and it turns green. Now we want the VR speed, which is 144. Oops. A little tricky trying to do it with the mouse. There we go, 144. And tap the center. And the last one is 152. Which is our V2 speed. And tap that. Now there is a slot above that called ref, and I am not sure what that is or how to fill it in, so I'm going to leave it empty. But uh, that should populate the ND with our reference takeoff speeds as we progress down the runway. Should. Let's see if it works. All right. Well, keep in mind our trim is 4.0. We're going to come back to that issue in a little bit. Uh, now we can come back up here. We want to turn on. Let's uh, zoom out just a little bit here. We want to flip on the flight director on both sides. We want to flip on the auto throttle. We can tap on the LNAV and VNAV buttons. Our nominal direction for takeoff is going to be 270. And our altitude is going to be 31,000 feet. And I'll come down here and just rotate the auto brake dial over to RTO mode. And while I'm in the vicinity, I'll come in here to the uh, computer switch and flip that up to auto position. And that's about all you need to do. It's indicating speed brakes here. Uh, that's I attribute that to being a bit of a flight factor bug. I'm, I'm really not sure because I haven't done anything with the speed brakes, and they're fine. Okay, uh, last thing, we'll come up here to the upper panel and start to get this all ready by, first of all, turning on the APU. You just rotate this dial to the start position, and you see that one of these lights just stopped, <laughs> went off. And what that means is that the forward fuel pump is operating in order to fuel the APU. We can check out the progress of the APU by looking at the lower ND and just flipping over to this window. So when it gets up around the 550, 600, it should be ready to, ready to use. Okay, it stopped at 640. I don't see any indication, but we can go up here and you'll see that first of all, you get a run indication here. This switch flips over automatically to the on position. And now we've got an off 
indication that indicated on the APU generator button. If we press that, it's now on. Now that we've got APU power to the aircraft, we can go ahead to our panel here and we can turn off the external power, come down here to operation, to uh, airplane, I'm sorry, to ground, and we can turn all these guys off. Get rid of the loader unit, make all that go away. Now, working our way from left to right, up and down, we've got the IRS all set up. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the yaw damper. I'll come down here. These switches are okay the way they are. The electric continuity switches are on, which is proper and covered. Uh, the engine uh, hydraulic pumps, I should say, those all four of them can go on. The um, demand switches can rotate to the auto position. Come over here in the center. This is all set so far so good. We can turn on some panel lights. Come back up here. We can leave the cargo heat off for the time being. We can arm the center emergency lights. Uh, this is oxygen and that's fine the way it is. We can rotate the engine start switches over to the auto position and go ahead and turn on the other fuel pumps, including the one that was already functioning. And uh, icing for the wings, we can leave that off until we get the engines running. We can come down here. We're going to be moving, so we'll turn on the anti-collision light. Fuel inversion is okay. We don't want to do anything with that. Window heat can go on so people can't freeze their nose to the window. And we can tell people to fasten their safety belts. Now I'm going to zoom in here just a little bit. In cabin altitude control, one thing you do here is you rotate this dial up to the auto rate position. And then you want to check your approach plate again and see that your altitude for landing is going to be about 680 feet altitude at Chicago. So we can dial this down in increments of 10 right down to 680 like so. And then the last thing is just to rotate the mode select over to auto two. And that's done. A couple of lights, cabin light switches here that can rotate up. We've got that light on. Leave the uh, cockpit door closed. We've got the uh, fans up here, recirc fans on, trim air, and these uh, Air conditioning switches are all on. Uh, now that we've got our APU on, we can go ahead and turn on the APU bleed, and you see that that functions. And we're all set, ready to roll. So let's go ahead and call up our pushback, and then I'll walk you through the start process as we get pushed back. Okay, he's given us permission to start the engines, so the first thing we're going to do in order to do that is turn the packs off. Having done that, I'm going to go to engine number two and rotate that to the ground position. And you'll see if we flip this back over to the engine mode, you'll see in the N2 engine it gets up to 15. And when it gets to 15, you then can turn on the fuel control run switch. I can then come back up here and start number one. You can see 9, 10, when that gets to 15, then you can start to introduce fuel to that engine. And then both of them continue revving up, spooling up, and getting themselves into good running order. So now we can turn those packs back on. And we're automatically on engine power now, so we can go ahead and turn the APU off by just switching the off switch. And then we want to shut off of the uh, isolation valves, three of them. And just about done here. Go ahead and set your parking brake. Turn off the APU valve. 
And we're the disconnecting the toe. Give me just a moment. The engine bleed valve. Alright, go up here. Once again, we turn it over to TARA. Come up to our upper panel and turn on all the lights. Taxi and runway turn off lights, all the landing lights, and the nose gear light. And I'll rotate the start switch over to CONT, continuous spark mode, in case of a flame out on takeoff. Everything else is ready to roll. Now, I'm going to go ahead and do this. I'm going to pop this screen here because I want to keep track of our speed as we take off, especially these B reference speeds, and make sure that that's operating properly. So we'll let the park brakes go. First, I'm going to go ahead and advance the throttle up to about 50%. Looks like we've got a little bit more than that. Okay, we'll let the brakes go. I'm going to hit my T for toga switch. Approaching three. Yeah, that's the spoilers, and I really don't know why it's doing that. But anyway, it looks like our speed tape is working perfectly fine. One, B2, and rotate. You're up, brakes. This way. Lights can come off. Flaps one. And flaps two. We'll take these to auto. And we've got VNAV and LNAV on, so we can go ahead and hit the command button, which puts us on autopilot. One of the nice things about being able to pop the screen, number one, is you can see it very clearly, and it also shows you a mini version of your uh, uh, MFD screen. And you'll notice I have keys mapped to zoom that MFD screen. So if I do this, I can zoom in or zoom out and practically see the entire route. Yeah, there it is. So here we are coming over to the route line. About to head out over Lake Michigan for a little bit. See any passengers in there? Welcome back. We just made our turn here after fog. We're heading down to uh, top of descent. I've gone ahead and dialed in 2200 feet based on the approach plate. One thing I'll mention earlier we were discussing the uh, trim settings 
and I'll show you the trim settings where that's done. Uh, it's this little device right there, stabilizer trim. And uh, what I discovered was that it sets itself automatically based on the FMC. And of course, it's dynamics as you fly the airplane, it'll change. But the basic trim setting, uh, once you start the engines, it sets itself automatically. Nothing you need to do. You can, of course, change it manually if you want to. Ah, one thing I see here that we could do is turn on the weather switch to WX. Although I don't think there's much weather out here to look at today. It's a rather nice day here in northern Wisconsin. All right, we're about to make our turn here at Kirk. And the altitude indicated for Kirk was 11,404. So, uh, looks like we're going to nail that. As we pass it by, it'll be just about 11,4. Indicating that our FMC is operating properly, guiding us on our descent into Chicago. There's Kirk right there, and here's 11.4. Perfect. Good turn now, and <clears throat> next waypoint is Evans. About 8.5 nautical miles to Evans. And we're coming right within range of our, lo uh, our locator. So I'm going to go ahead and tap on the APP button, which is up here on the upper glare shield. Just go like that. And you can see that LNAV indicates that it's already active, the uh, locator. And our FMC speed just drops to 214. <clears throat> and now that we are approaching the runway, I'll go ahead and turn on our runway turn off lights. Nose gear isn't down yet, so it doesn't, I don't need to do anything with those just yet. I'll go ahead and rotate these uh, engine switches over to continuous mode. Got a bunch of weather out there. Here. Now that the gear is down, we'll go ahead and lower the lights, turn them on. Yeah, go ahead. You can do it. Well, stop that. Stay there. Okay. So it's about as far in as I can zoom. FMC speed is dropping. Flaps 5 going up to flaps 10. All right, we've reverted over to instrument speed. We'll go ahead and dial that down to 
our reference speed of 142 plus some for windage. So we'll pick, uh, see what our wind is. It says 165 to 22. We'll pick about 150, I should think. Even 152, 10 knots to compensate for our headwind. Another notch of flaps. You can see the screen speed is slowed down because of all this weather. Unavoidable when you're at a big airport like O'Hare. Well, there's our annunciator telling us 1,000 feet. Notch of flaps. One hundred. Auto throttle off, or uh, autopilot off. Reverse off. Looks like we missed our exit, so I'll have to go Approaching up here. Approaching four left. Yeah, we'll take the next exit. Next exit up. <clears throat> Allah, there it is. inches. Boom. All right. So lights off. So she light can go off. I can stay. We can tell people they can get out of their seats. We can go ahead and turn on the APU valve, turn off the engine lead valves, make sure that our, our isolation valves are open. We can leave the air conditioning on for a little bit while people disembark the aircraft. Everything else can stay on, but what we can do then is come down here to the uh, lower console and uh, before I do anything else, I'm going to call up our handy iPad, go to airplane, we'll open up a couple of doors, cargo, let all that go, get our passenger door open, and last thing is to put these guys down, and you should see button. There we go. There comes the RV. Okay, so the gate has approached the aircraft. Let's try that again. Too many keys. Bags are getting unloaded. People are disembarking. It's a rainy day here in Chicago after that beautiful flight. And it all seemed to work. 
So that's the Flight Factor Boeing 767-300. This aircraft comes in two versions. It has a 300 model and a 200 model. It also comes with freighters in both versions of that aircraft. Uh, it's a little complicated how you load them. You have to load the aircraft first and then determine if you're flying a freighter or a uh, passenger aircraft. Um, and various features work with each of those. But it, uh, it works. Uh, everything seems to function pretty well now that I've got all my kinks ironed out. It took me a while. Some notes back and forth with Flight Factor to figure out how things worked. Among other things, the updater that they use, which is a bit confusing. If any of you are having trouble with uh, the Flight Factor updater, be sure to let me know that in the comments section below. Uh, and I can help you out with that, but uh, it's a little bit confusing, I know. Um, after that, if you have any comments or thoughts or opinions, or if you think this is all stupid, or <laughs> if you had fun and you enjoyed it, and if you'd like to see more or different aircraft, um, I've got lots of them to play with. We can try everything. I appreciate you joining me today on our flight here to Chicago. This is Steve, your desk-bound aviator, and I will see you soon.